the broad goals of the CSH, the, the scientific goals or the research goals, are to investigate the different definitions of life. So the theoretical definition, historical, functional, uh, practical definitions. How do we look for life elsewhere in the universe? How do we define what being habitable means on another planet? Uh, how do we exploit the different facilities we have from the space, from the ground, uh, using different telescopes, um, different detectors? And how do we make sense of all this? And also, what are the implications, even beyond science, of what we find? So our goals are very broad, and they include a very broad spectrum of people. So they include uh, astronomers, astrophysicists, planetary scientists, chemists, biologists, geologists, even philosophers and theologians. I am an expert in the atmospheres of exoplanets. There are two ways to look for life. Either you scan it from very far away, and besides telling how big or how massive a planet is, uh, the next step is to say what kind of molecules it has in its atmosphere. Does it have oxygen, have water, have methane? And the hope is that if we understand the atmospheres really, really well, we can tell if these molecules are due to geology or biology, for example. And therefore, we can say something about the life, the second method is to build a starship and fly there. This is not going to happen in my lifetime, probably in the next few lifetimes. So studying atmospheres is the, real, the only real practical way we have. I have lived basically all of my adult life as a foreigner. I no longer consider a single place as home. Every place is home and every country teaches me something interesting. So with the Americans, I, I learn how to think of bold ideas, how to be spontaneous, how to do things when you think about it, how to chase ideas you are excited about. Um, with, with the Swiss, I, I learn patience, I learn uh, dignity, and so there are always interesting lessons to learn from every culture. Do I miss home? Not really. <laughs> I like to consider myself as being a very good manager of time. And after my son arrived, this statement was, has to be even more true because the days get shorter, the nights get even shorter. So when I come to work, I have to be really focused and I'm usually very efficient and now I have to be even more efficient, of course, for him. One of the recent discoveries is that exoplanets are very common. And in fact, your chances of finding a exoplanet around another star is better than 10%. And there are billions and billions of stars just in our galaxy, and there are billions and billions of galaxies in the observable universe. So unless life is a very, very rare event, then there must be life elsewhere in the universe. Of course, we do not know what very, very rare means, because we don't have a theory for how life form yet. Um, we don't have a theory for biology. Right, but this is what makes it fascinating. We are, for the first time in history, we can actually try and answer this question. It's no longer science fiction. You always need some kind of theory, meaning physics and mathematics, to make sense of the data you're measuring. So when you measure a spectrum and you see lots of lines and wiggles, how do you go from the spectrum to making a statement like saying, we have seen water, you need theory, you need quantum mechanics, you need radiative transfer, you need uh, fluid dynamics, you need chemistry. My own interest and passion is in figuring out all the, all the little interesting details behind all of these different features of theory and then putting it all together and trying to make sense of what the data is telling us. 
So the grand goal is that if you can have a complete theory of atmospheres, then when you look at a spectrum and you look at and you interpret it to have a set of molecules, you can tell if the molecules come from physics, from geology or from, from life. So you can tell what the signals are telling you. The, the contrast between theoretical astrophysics and cooking is so great, it gives me a, a change of scenery. Because when you do theory or science in general, you, you, you put in a lot of effort and you invest in doing something and you wait a very long time before you see the result, months, years, sometimes decades. With cooking, the gratification is instantaneous. I was trained in a French-American cooking, so I don't really have one dish that I like. I just like cooking. Cooking is fun. I guess one of my goals as CSH director is to create and maintain a world-class fellowship program that is recognized at an international level so we can have all of the youngest and brightest researchers come to the University of Bern to do research. And secondly, once they come here, to provide them with the right intellectual environment so that they will interact, they will talk to each other and not just shut themselves in their offices and work on their own projects. So that, I think, the interaction would be the biggest challenge.